So you have to hit start also. Uh -huh. to get, and then watch the live. Okay, now you got it. It should be recorded. Look at your look at your phone. Yeah, it says live. We're we're live. We're back on. We're back on, sir. We're back on. It has a delay. I appreciate it. It froze again. I don't know. Let me refresh and see. I think it is. It froze on his show and it froze again. It's back. There's something wrong with the internet, I think. Well, it is 829. Instead of filing the lawsuit, which 
happened almost immediately. If the lawsuit had not been filed, everyone had attended the next regularly scheduled meeting, the council could have then chosen to reappoint her to her seat. But instead of waiting until the next regularly scheduled meeting, putting it on the agenda to have her reappointed to her seat, voting on it, putting her back in office, which would have been the quickest, easiest, least expensive way to do it, and it was a viable way to do it. Instead of waiting until that meeting, we had several people on council and one who did not qualify to sit on council file a lawsuit against the city. So instead of waiting and following the rules, the inexpensive way to do it, to go right to that next meeting and just reappoint her, put her back in her position and move right along, the lawsuit is filed. So it is up to the decision of our council on whether or not to recoup, try to recoup the attorney fees. But I think that the, when you have your council members suing the city, when there's no need to sue the city, just simply come back and take action, be available to you, then I lean towards the fact that I think that money is owed the city. Thank you. Receiving her would eliminate one year of her representation. So when a person is appointed on the council, it is not some magical penalty that is suddenly restored. It eliminates a good chunk of the time that she was legally elected to her position. In addition to that, the mechanism by which this was done is questionable at best. 602.002 states may, and they want it. is optional. It is not required. It states very clearly this is basic reading comprehension that anybody in 10th, 9th grade in high school should be able to copy. May is not the same as must. May is not the same as shall. May is not the same as will. I can add to that. If I may. Council, would you like to hear from Dr. Flynn on the paper? Okay. Nice. Thank you. Michael Flynn, 11, Hamilton Lane. Where both of Mr. Sanderson and he was correct. There is an interpretation there, and you can parse that however you want. But the issue stands that the law is the law. And they still had the option, as Ms. Scott mentioned, that they could have reappointed her. Okay? Yes, yeah, she might have lost a year. But she still would have had that year to serve, and it would, our city would not be out $70,000 because of your actions. Mr. McCormick posted on Netscape that he would have voted to reappoint Ms. Gonzalez. I responded to his, point, to his post that I agree with that position because I don't think someone should be disenfranchised on a technicality, even if it's the law. But you decide to take a further step and sue the city, and in that respect, you are seeking to destroy or you are hurting what you ostensibly seek to govern. And you are responsible for your actions for bringing that suit. You brought that on yourself. And you owe the city, in my opinion, recompensation. Thank you.
So the, um, <clears throat> and I have with me a scholarly article that I printed out and also established it to 11 points so here by the local government public. Percentages are set at 75%. <clears throat> it must be at least five members on the board. That's the bottom. You can't go below. You can't have three. So there must be five. I don't read it anywhere in that ordinance where it says it has to be a non number, but I would think any single person would be most probably on <clears throat> And then it all matters must be heard by 75% of the members, not the members present. So if you go to seven, then you're going to have to have whatever 75% of seven is. And if you go higher than that, if you go to nine, then you're going to have to have more. So just maybe that's a consideration thing. What's the rationale to go from five to seven? It may make it more difficult to get the requisites. A number of people that I don't know that I just throw out. And, 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 and we had this issue recently while I was on the last word with Justin. <coughs> well, I guess it's still in because of his reappointment. Um, where this very issue came up and a, an alternate sat in for the presentation, the hearing process. Because the Board of Adjustment is a court. It's not a commission. It's not, it functions as a quasi-judicial court. It can subpoena witnesses and have sworn So a member sat in as an alternate because of this, one of the city members was not able to come to a comment. But then that member had to choose themselves in the vote. I said, a conflict of interest. Well, that created a, really is just a terrible problem. And, and the problem, and then at the end of the day, it was uh, the variance was allowed, but with less than, than 75%. And, and the law is quite clear, you just can't do that. But at the time, I don't think the chairman, my fact, I don't think anybody else other than myself knew that. And I tried to make it. Somehow be redone, but it's, it's slipped past. So it, there's a lot of things that, for some odd reason, uh, either people don't read the statute when they get appointed, or there's no training, or the booklet that was really very good laid all out just disappeared. It must be in that office somewhere, uh, unless they were all burned in a fire. I, I just don't know. It needs to be greatly improved because it is a court proceeding. And it's not one of these, oh, well, why don't these people and they're good people? But, yeah, they should get it. Well, the other reason. That's a nice concept, but it's not in the work of justice. So I just offer that to you, because I don't know these proposals. I, I don't know why they're different. And there's several competing proposals, <coughs> different so memberships, and I guess different things. But um, that's all I say. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, we also like to speak to public care and just sit in the corner. Well, as a former 207 chair, I have I've signed up for 10, 11, and 12 because of the, the same reasons that Brother Dooley did, which is all related. Uh, first of all, let me take exception to a couple of things that Brother Dooley commented on. <coughs> the city council can overrule a motion to deny a, a, a recommendation uh, by the Board of Adjustment by a supermajority. That really is the only place where the city council has to have a supermajority vote on anything with regard to the city council. No, no sir. No, that you're, it's your time to public hearing, but that's not exactly correct. I'll be glad to finish your talk, and then we'll talk about that. There is no appeal to the city council from an action by the Board of Adjustment. The action is the, the appeal, if any, is to district or county court. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, in any case, 
the civilian commission that has that limitation. This is a public hearing on an amendment to the zoning ordinance specific to the composition, yeah. um, et cetera, of the Board of Adjustment. Okay. There is another section in the, in the zoning ordinance that says it requires a super majority of the, yeah. of the council to overrule a denial by the zoning commission, but that doesn't apply to the zoning board of adjustment. Yeah. I apologize for the interruption. Brother Newman, I apologize for apology, except an improper correction. Let me just say that the problem that we've seen on city council with regard to appointment and the zoning commission and the board of adjustment is that committees are selected by a majority vote of the council. And that support that subjects all the appointments to the prevailing political winds, whatever they may be, effectively disenfranchised with the council minority and the voters who put them in office. Even when the mayor and council members make nominations to vote the council majority, refusing to affirm those nominations negates the minority or mayoral nomination. This is a problem and an infringement on the democratic process. Uh, so I've offered a second potential. Uh, Ordinance. Myself and Mr. Gregory put together one that said item 12. I asked that the council uh, disapprove item 11, the ordinance in item 11, and approve the ordinance presented in item 12, or however we choose to amend it. I think it gives you a better choice if each member of the council appoints one member of the zoning board or commission and the mayor appoints uh, the alternates of the mayor the fire the council decides to do it. In any case, I leave that to you and uh, suggest that you disapprove the item and item number 11. Thank you, Mr. Oh, you want another item? I would make both of them. I would make item 12 effective December 1st, and I would defer appointments to, uh, to go to the uh, Sunday Board of Adjustment until the next meeting so that the members will have an opportunity to explore and identify potential members of that committee. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Anybody else? It is 8.50. We're going to close the public hearing. We're going to move on to item number 7. Yes, sir. I'd like to request that we uh, move out consideration of item 12. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Andrew on item 12. On favor? All those? Same? Yeah. Mr. Tennant, you're saying? Mr. Okay. Uh, since I'm bringing number 12, I want to make one change. Just to clarify real quick, Mr. Berry, that was uh, three uh, with two of the same. Uh, motion passes. We move to number 12. Mr. Berry, you can see. I want to make one change in section 50-539, paragraph 1. Halfway down, this is where I would like for it to read. The mayor shall nominate and the council shall appoint. I want to change this. Well, shall appoint. One at large member. There shall be three alternates to this board, one appointed by the mayor, and this is where I want to take the change. Two appointed by the council at large, period. The name of that sentence will be struck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, the reason that we're here tonight at this end day is because Mr. Shaw insisted that any change to the board of adjustment had to go before the zoning commission. So actually we cannot consider item 12 because the zoning commission has already made their decision and there can't be any changes at this point. If you want to send it back to the zoning commission, we will have to have a further delay for several months just as we had before. Um, but we can't vote to change anything that the zoning commission has already voted on the zoning commission makes a recommendation. The zoning commission holds a public hearing. The zoning commission makes a recommendation. The zoning commission held its public hearing. It made a recommendation. There's an alternative item before the council. Um, it does not have to go back to the zoning commission because the zoning commission already held its public hearing or even made its recommendation. So it is germane and timely to consider item number 12 uh, with or without the proposed change that Mr. Gregory made. Thank you so much, Mr. Rizman. So um, 
for the benefit of this discussion, I'd like to point out that um, the reason that this has come up is this item came um, once before to the Zoning Commission because in our zoning ordinances it would require it to be addressed there in terms of the appointments of the Board of Adjustment. The Zoning Commission at that time chose to take no action on it. Um, a few months later when the Zoning Commission had uh, was newly uh, constituted, uh, they brought forth this recommendation. I think the point of both of those is that there is concern about previously this basically allowed either the mayor or the council as a whole collectively to make these appointments versus a concern that there should be representation on each of our committees and commissions based on the composition of the city council as well. So what I would like to suggest Mr. Gregory as a possible alternative for discussion and perhaps consideration is I know that one of the Mr. Gregory, this first has to be done as a motion for an amendment on something that has to be voted on <coughs> for discussion. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Shaw to clarify that thing. Um, Mr. Gregory, I don't know whether you were making a motion when you made the first comment under this agenda item, but it would be permissible for someone to make a motion to adopt um, ordinance number 2019-11-19-C uh, under item 12 with the following change or the proposed ordinance under item 11 with whatever change if any was indicated um, and if that motion inclusive of the um, potential amendment to the presented wording were seconded, that would be something for the council to consider and act upon. Mr. Gregory, I would just suggest that if there was an opportunity before those motions are made, amendments to amendments made, that we had the possibility of discussing this a little bit further, I think it would be helpful to reach a consensus on this. Thank you, sir. Um, so, um, what I know from this is basically there, are, there have been a number, there have been several recommendations that have been made and there have been suggestions to come up that we increase the size of the commissions or committees to seven, that we perhaps leave them at five and bring in four alternates, that we have a formula by which one person is appointed by one person, another person is appointed by the mayor, another gets an appointment based on the time that they've been on council. I think to the public and to the governance of the city, it makes it very complicated to be able to understand. I also believe, having chaired the zoning commission before, perhaps those of you who have been on the city council might have this prior to this would have perspective too, is that increasing the size of these commissions and committees and boards um, doesn't constitute any more effectiveness by them. I think Brother Julie made an important point about um, getting majorities to, to be in attendance when you have these larger numbers, etc. So what I wanted to lay, on the, to lay out for consideration is if we were to consider leaving the composition at five members and two alternates that it would permit each council member to appoint one member of the commission or board so everybody on the council regardless of whether you're in the majority or the minority has representation there from those five committee members the mayor would have the prerogative to appoint the chairman of the alternates that one alternate would be appointed by the mayor and one alternate would be appointed by the city council as a whole. I believe that what this would do is keep the committee still within a very manageable set. It would allow each of the council members to still have the right to uh, have their point of view re reflected and ensure that minority opinions are also represented on uh, each of these boards and commissions. If that is something that would be palatable to the council to consider, I would be happy to either make that as a amendment to any motion that's made or bring up a, a, a substitute motion on it. But that's what I would like to lay out for the session. 
I think it would be for the first section because the first section will be talk primarily about alternates. And it's one of those, which we're in agreement with, it could be members. It's just that alternates, we have a slight difference. Uh, I would refer to the former chairman of the Zoning Commission of the Lord to alternates. But I, and I do believe, though, that we ought to move forward every member of the council shall appoint a member to the committee. Uh, I've sat here many years and watched the majority of just run with the ramp over from Russia as a member over minority people here on the council who may not even have a chance to speak. So I think your, your suggestion is improvement over mine. And uh, so therefore I will keep the first half, the first section, and I invite the council member to put his suggestions in the second half of that paragraph with regard to alternates. Uh, Ms. Linger, you had a comment on that. Ms. Linger, you're the first as an alternate. Um, I just want to point out that we already have presented this as an ordinance to the city council, and Mr. Schnall insisted that any change to the Board of Adjustment had to go before the Zoning Commission because of a word he came up with, textual. So he can't change his position now because anything that we do, any change over what they voted for, has to go back to the zoning commission before he leaves his school. Day. I know. I respectfully disagree. The zoning commission has made its recommendation. It's just that. It's a recommendation. The governing body can do what it wishes to do. It can accept the zoning commission's recommendation or it can do something else. It's no different from when the Zoning Commission comes to this council and recommends approval of a zoning change. And the council, having considered it, says, no, we don't think we want to approve that, and doesn't approve it. It's the same thing. The, the issue was, continues to be, that our zoning ordinance says that any changes to the wording of the ordinance has to originate in the Zoning Commission. It does not say that the city council has to rubber stamp and accept whatever recommendation comes from the zoning commission. Like Mr. Isbrand, I sat on the zoning commission of this community for about 25 years, and I feel comfortable in providing an opinion and interpretation of the wording of that ordinance. Thank you, uh, Mr. May. First of all, I want to applaud uh, Mr. McCormick for pushing this forward because we do need a change. And I applaud the various uh, amendments that are being tossed around. But before we get into the final form for voting, I would just make one pitch, and that is that we do need an expansion in the number of alternates for one very good reason. One of the things that I heard over and over again is I want an opportunity to serve. And we've already heard from one of the speakers that we are losing historical uh, expertise, and we need people that are being trained and have that experience so that we have the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. So I would ask that the final version have an expansion of at least one uh, alternate. So if we're at two now, I would propose three. Then can I give us some clarification from Mr. Gregory? Would you say each member of the council, does that include the mayor, or is that just the council as the council members? I would like, frankly, since we've got them both here, I would like to get two former chairs of the Zoning Commission. I'd like to see state in there and, and work it through. But what they would think, should the mayor have a vote in the, or an appointment to a commission like this, or should it be left as it is just to the, the committee, the city council members? And like Mr. Small, Mr. Small, Mr. Isbrand, to re-express again, I think uh, he said basically it should just be the council Is that correct, Mr. Rivering? It is my my impression, and I agree with Mr. May. I, I applaud Mr. McCormick and others who have tried to try to move this forward. I, I become concerned that the interest in increasing the size of each of these is based on trying to accommodate 
um, the number of council members and the mayor or others, whereas I felt that giving the authority to the mayor to appoint a chair from the five nominees, or from the five appointees that would come one from each council member would be um, be the appropriate. May I may I read um, some language that, that may clarify that? Again, this is for deliberation consideration. So, uh, working from or proposed ordinance number 2019-1119C. So, section one, I, um, the proposed change I would offer for consideration is the zoning board of adjustment shall consist of five members and two alternate members, that was Mr. May's uh, suggestion there, who shall be residents of the city of Castle Hills and not members of the city council and the zoning commission of the architectural review committee. Prior to appointments, the mayor and aldermen are encouraged to solicit applications, resumes, or indications of interest from citizens. Each alderman shall appoint one member whose place on the committee shall correspond to the place of the appointing alderman. The mayor shall appoint a chairman from among the members appointed by each alderman. There shall be two alternates to this board, one appointed by the mayor, one appointed by council at large. The minimum quorum for meetings of the board of adjustment shall be three members or alternates. I'm happy to share the language if it would be helpful to give us something to work on. Yeah. The only, thing I wanted, the only thing I wanted to bring up is that uh, Mr. May had said that he actually wanted to put this matter off of the appointments because he wanted to have people apply. And I think that's a very good idea. I agree with him. Um, the thing is, if you're going to do that, it's very difficult to sit here and listen or even to be able to read something comprehensively that we haven't been able to see in the past. I don't hear anything that you said, Joe, that I disagree with. It sounds very sensible to me, but I'd like to have the opportunity to look it over. And if we're going to put this off until the next meeting, anybody can make the appointments, at least. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Can't hear you. I think we should move the table. Well, I, I will defer to, to, the, to the council on what it wants to do, and I acknowledge your point very well, Ms. Winger, that you know, it's, this is language obviously that I'm sitting prior to coming here and thinking about and if it would be beneficial to give um, everybody more time to deliberate this. What my goal here tonight was to try to identify that I believe that we can reach consensus between the concerns that we've had previously. Should everybody be elected as a whole or should everybody be elected by, appointed by the mayor or should only, you know, how should it play out? I think this is potentially um, and I think you would, you know, you would address the fact that, you know, if there's a minority in council, which likely there is always an opportunity for them, that these people should not be excluded as has been done so often in the past. So I'm totally in agreement with everything I hear, but um, I also am in agreement with Mr. May, May's suggestion, which, by the way, historically we have had three alternates exactly for that reason. So I do think we should reconsider that. And then, you know, simply make it, you know, uh, two alternates appointed by council, uh, one by the mayor, and the mayor, sure, can name the chair. I don't have a problem with any of it, but I'd just like to be able to look at it. And since we're not going to be making the appointments tonight, can we just table both that and the appointments to the next meeting so that we can deal with it, you know, that we can get people to apply and see who the best people are. So that's what we all want. Sure. Yes. I, I understand very much. Appreciate your point of view. This is actually Mr. Gregory's item, so I would certainly prefer to handle the other appropriate procedures. Mr. Mayor, I'm Mr. Gregory. I'm Mr. Gregory. Until the December council. Um, before we have a second, I would just ask that we hear from the citizens inside that to speak. That we'll sure. take it off of this. Um, first, we have uh, Mr. Squire. <laughs> I did not sign up. Okay. Uh, Mr. McCormick. Hi, I'm former 207 Carol Wood. Uh, personally, I'd like to see this resolved tonight with regard to the ordinance. In particular, we have that we 
if we enact the ordinance next meeting, it won't become effective until the mayor signs it, which might be two or three days later. And it might be premature at that point to make appointments under an ordinance that's not yet in effect. I'd rather see the ordinance carried out tonight. Now, in that regard, Mr. Isbrand made the comment that at a, a, a quorum for the Board of Adjustment would be three. There's a little problem with that. In paragraph uh, 211.08d, in each case before the Board of Adjustment must be heard by at least 75% of its members. And that means that you have to have four or five anytime you have anything before the Board of Adjustment to be considered. So it appears to me that three alternates might be appropriate because you're going to have to have a super, a super majority quorum in order to hear anything. You might get, get by with a vote of three, but you're going to have to have a quorum of four for whatever that's worth if you have five members. Other than that, I have nothing else except that I'll make it make the first of December and make appointments at the next council. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. Uh, next, we have Brother Julian. Uh, Brother Julian, 201, glad you opened it. The only thing, I, I also think it should be, this has been back at the round, I think, a lot. But I think the order, now I've had a chance to read them, I looked them up on my phone, and um, I just think five and seven. The more alternates you have, I think is better, because then if you're lacking a more, uh, I remember on several many occasions where only four people were present, and Chairman Schluger at that time would advise to have them. If you'd like to defer this to another day, I'm willing to do that because you understand you have to have an unanimous decision. It has to be four, even if only four showed up. So it's not 75% of four, but it's 75% of five, i.e. four. So it really gets critical in the both to hear it and to positively grant the variant. Now, the other thing I would add, um, I think the numbers fall very nicely for five. And then <clears throat> the mayor appointed the chairman who he can then chime in as to who he thinks is most qualified among those, those appointees. The other thing I would add, I saw language in there about something about the mayor may solicit applications or something like that. And I think just like everything else, there ought to be an application period. It ought to be announced on the website. And people are interested. It wouldn't be just the board of adjustment, but I think there ought to be an If applications are imminent for some particular off of a, uh, off of a board commission, it ought to be announced. And a lot of times in the past, there's all this kind of undercover, and then all of a sudden, these people are not work there. Never seen them at a city council meeting ever in my life. So I think it's announced, and there's a time period. It can be as short as the other time period we were talking about, three weeks, whatever. But then having people know, yeah, let me throw my name in the pot for something I'm willing to do. And that's why I think it shouldn't say the mayor may, the mayor shall um, facilitate a period of fabrication. And I think it should go to the mayor, and then it's up to him to distribute it to the council. I think corresponding with a particular council person, person saying, I'm interested in it. If the mayor is going to do it, then I think you ought to do it to the district, the next season, the people, etc. Thank you. Thank you, Brother John. I don't believe we have anybody else signed up. Um, that being said, Mr. Gregory, can you proceed with your original motion? Uh, this is my motion. I'd like to revise section 50-531 to 3. Nope. I'd like to revise it to 3 as proposed. Zoning board adjustment shall consist of five members and three alternate members who shall be residents of the city of Castle Hills and not members of the city council, the zoning commission, or the architects or review committee. Prior to appointments, 
The mayor and aldermen are encouraged to solicit application. Resumes, place of the committee, just correspond to the place of the appointing alderman. The mayor shall appoint a chairman or among the members appointed by the alderman. There shall be three aldermen to this board. One appointed by the mayor, two appointed by council at large. The minimum core of the meetings of the Board of Justice shall be four members or alternates. Members of the two, uh, members and alternates shall serve two year terms after the initial appointments. The vacancy shall be filled for meeting on a expired term. The term of the initial appointment shall end July 1, 2020. The subsequent appointments for places two and two, three, and alternates shall end June 1, 2021. For places 145 and on June 1, 2022. Number three remains the same. Number four remains the same with a typographical change on the second line. If the mayor and city manager shall ensure that each newly appointed member of this board is informed generally of their duties, or shall be informed generally of their duties, it's just a typographical error. Number five, the members of the zoning board just may set their own rules and procedures for effective operation of committee activities consistent with applicable law, the city code ordinances, and guidance which they would provide from time to time by action of the city council. I move this motion and propose. I 
I'm sure Mr. Rackers will that up for me. Item 13, the session of possible action to appoint, uh, to appoint a member to the Ad Hoc Project Committee to fill the City Council of Representatives on the Ad Hoc Project Committee and Parks Commission to replace Skin McCormick, who has been replaced on council, Mr. Rackers. I have gone to, I had gone to these meetings before, and no doubt the last three or four. This is a remarkable little group of people. Uh, this, I can tell, most of them didn't vote for me, which is a good thing. And second, they have very good ideas. I mean, you can throw probably eight of them in the trash can, but they have a couple of really smart ideas for the city. This is sort of a think tank, an idea, group of people. And I think we've got the right people on this committee. I hope they stay. And uh, it, it's a, uh, uh, this is an appointment to Field of Council Representative. Uh, I'll be back for the committee to figure out who they want on that thing. But uh, I, I've enjoyed sitting in on those things, and I look forward to doing so in the future. If they need me, they report reporting back against me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Um, Mayor and Council, I would agree with Mr. Gregory that it's a remarkable group, and I would encourage anyone who has not come to one of those Saturday meetings to do so. It's an excellent group. Um, there are excellent ideas. There's a lot of momentum there, and I think there's a lot of tremendous opportunity for our community to be involved with this ad hoc project committee. I want to recognize um, Mr. McCormick for the leadership that he has provided on that committee, um, as well as uh, Chairman Squire and the excellent work that has been done there. Um, with the absence of uh, Mr. McCormick as the um, count, City Council Representative, I would like to move that we appoint Mr. Gregory as the Council Representative. We have a motion. And a big motion. I'll go ahead and second Will we have a second in session? Okay, before we vote, I think we have citizen sign up to speak on this one. Let me double check, Mr. Squire. Thank you, Mayor. And if I made a mistake, I signed it for, I tried to sign it for 13 and 14, if I made a mistake on there, yes. so I apologize. Um, as chairman of the Ad Hoc Project uh, uh, Committee, <coughs> did have a chance to poll the members of the committee, and I just want to make sure council knows and convey to council that the members that I talked to, that they were in agreement that they'd like to see Douglas Gregory serve as our council liaison uh, for this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you for the discussion. Uh, all in favor? All opposed? Uh, motion passes for one. Item number 14, the session of possible action to appoint, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's right. Uh, the session of possible action to appoint slash appoint five members of the Ad Hoc Project Committee to fill the position created by the election of Mr. Joe Grant, Mr. Chairman of the Council, and Mr. D.R. Tremaine, the Mayor, Mr. Baker. Uh, I do understand that every uh, new member should have the right to appoint replacements for uh, the current members of the committee. Uh, I would strongly urge you though to keep the current members as constituted. It is a remarkable mix of people. And, and you may have people just as remarkable as they on this committee. But I strongly urge to keep a good mixture. They listen to one another. Uh, very rarely do you find all these on one committee. And uh, it, you all do whatever you want to do. I would suggest that you uh, uh, reappoint uh, all the current people that is, uh, you can. Reconstituted as it is now. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Mr. 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 Mayor and Council members, I would consider it an honor to be able to reappoint Mr. Jack Joyce to represent Place One. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Mr. Sean, do you vote on these individually? Uh, that has been what's been done in the past, so I think yes. Okay, we'll be having a discussion on uh, Mr. Joyce. Uh, actually, yes, I guess we need to hear the citizens first on this one. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Squire. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, as chairman of the project, of the Private Ad Hoc Project Committee, uh, I 
had a chance to uh, talk to the members of the committee, engage their interests. And I uh, wanted to confirm some of the, some of the thoughts here and also wanted to convey what I, what I found out. Uh, for place one, Jack Joyce uh, specifically strong desires to continue to, to serve. Uh, place two, Bernard Edemeyer, uh, strong desires to continue to uh, serve. Uh, for place three, uh, Bonnie Hoppe, uh, desires, strong desires to continue to serve. Uh, and for place six, uh, myself, I desire to continue to serve. I also want to point out uh, to the committee uh, that in any capacity, uh, former uh, council liaison Skip McCormick uh, desires and strong desires to continue to be part of this committee. So I would hope that council can can appoint him in some form or fashion to be on this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Squire. Uh, Mr. McCormick, I had you down. I'm glad to bring you to us here. I believe Mr. Squire covered everything. Uh, I, did, I did want to mention Ms. Hockey in place three. I don't know if you mentioned her or not, but if you did, if you didn't find it, if you did find it, I do want to encourage you to point Ms. Hockey. She's being our only female representative on the committee. I think we should have at least one female representative. Uh, I'd be happy to serve. I don't necessarily think I have to be on the committee itself. I can serve as a citizen of a vote. And so, Mr. Sanderson uh, can appoint whomever he would like to, to, I mean, sorry, Ms. Wayne can appoint someone to replace Mr. Sanderson. I've got a doubt she's going to appoint me to replace him. So, I'll believe you that. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. So, we have a motion on the table for Ms. Jacob. I'd like to clarify. Ms. Wayne, we have a motion on the table. Okay, well, we, Mr. Wayne, thank you so much. We have a motion on the table for Mr. Joyce. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Joyce will be continuing his place in place one, is that correct? Uh, Ms. Winger? As I, I made an appointment at a previous meeting, I appointed George Booth to replace Mr. Sanders. So he said, go in meetings. I don't know why I'm going to do this or that. Okay, thank you, Ms. Winger. Uh, may I ask you? Uh, yes, sir. Place one, two, three. Place three. Oh, well, back to the 
So, uh, all in favor of Misaki? All opposed? Abstain? Okay, uh, we have motion passed 3 uh, 0 and 2 with two abstentions. Okay, let's try this again. Discussion, uh, item number 15, discussion of possible action on ordinance number 2019 Mayor, I, I did, did not hear a nomination for Mr. Sanderson, so I think that's what the point of order is about. Yeah. Mr. Sanderson has this too. Uh, the point of record, I appointed George Booth the uh, so, okay, thank you, Mr. Rafferty. Mr. Sanderson, you have an appointment? So, I, can you go ahead and tell me who would be over a for a point right now that won't go ahead and continue it? Mr. Squire? And that has not already been one. Currently, it's, it's the appointment of reaffirmation of the uh, of the members of the, of the committee so we can get back to a full slate. And at this point, it, it'd be at this for your place. So let me start off with your quick with Yelmar. Yeah, the one that is correct. And then there's some question that would be. I thought I already appointed him a couple of meetings ago, but apparently. Yeah, well, somebody's lost. I, I thought I appointed him a couple of meetings ago, but apparently. I thought the authority happened, but okay, I will appoint Yelmar, sure. Okay, uh, all in favor of Mr. Yelmar, next to Approve the advocacy. Uh, while we're here, Mr. Mayor, did you have somebody else? No, I was going to do that. Okay, perfect. I think we can officially move on to 15. Uh, discussion of possible action ordinance number 201 119 one Ordinance by the City Council of Zia Castle Building Building Section 8 23 of Chapter 8 of the Code of Ordinances to revise the method of appointment of members and alternates to the architectural review. Establishing operating rules and procedures and setting an effective date. Mr. Gregory. Once again, I think this is needed. So, to ensure that everybody has a chance to have their voice heard and each alderman can appoint whoever they want on this thing. So, I think it's a And the section of ordinance speaks for itself. Mr. Edgar. Um, so, Mr. Berry, I wonder again if we've got a discussion about this one. It's, it, the way I read this, this is one that as well would have increased the number of the members to seven. Right. And I would like to, if I may, make the same um, um, argument, if you will, as I did on the last one. That, and again, I'd be happy to share potential language. I don't know if you all care to parse that or if there's a particular reason that you would want this one to be seven, but I'd like to at least offer this as similar to the one we just voted on the board of adjustment. Can you tell us specifically what you were altered? Sure. So um, on section A, it would be instead of seven members, it would be five members. Um, the, the terms, the initial terms in section two would change, and that language should be done around to you. Um, section three would remain the same. Um, section four would remain the same. And, I'm sorry, section D. And section E would simply be striking the words, shall elect their own chair and officers annually. So again, it would be five members of the council would appoint a member to the um, committee with the mayor um, uh, selecting the chair of the committee. But you want to, I believe this one already had three. It has two alternate members in the current vote draft that you have. I don't know if you'll want to increase that to three or leave it and define how that would be selected. But the intention would be the same. That each council member would have the right to appoint a member to ensure that we have appropriate representation from all those who have been elected. Mr. Rain? Uh, the same uh, comment I made the last time. I'd just like to expand it to three on the alternate and leave everything else as, as proposed. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, it's maybe glaring the obvious, but I'd like to ask just Make sure. Um, do we have any of the uh, recommended courses for action you know, for removal for these as well? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. The 
Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, what I passed around were, were changes to it. The, uh, the removal process is in a section that remains the same. That would be section D. Okay. And just to clarify, going back to item number, I believe it was 12, and there's now fees and failure to maintain reasonable familiarity and that whole well, that, that entire section as Mr. Gregory noted in making the motion remain the same. Okay. So yes, sir, all that remaining in place. This language that uh, drafted for consideration and discussion is simply where uh, I saw one of the sections is potentially either being changed or having a slight nuance in the verbiage. Thank you. Mr. Gregory. So your changes would be Mr. Gregory microphone. You know, I'm going to lose my voice the last few years. I'm actually going to pick it The change in uh, the amendments in my proposal is in section A, consists of five members and two alternate members. Further on down the paragraph, there should be three alternates to their, this board. One of them about the mayor, one of them the council at large. And that's the two appointed by the council at large. Section B, <coughs> as proposed here, Section C remains the same, and Section D remains the same. Yes, sir, I'm sorry, the document I shared with you, I had the uh, numbers wrong, so there should be a Section D remains the same, and Section E was where that slight modification was. And Section E. Where is Mr. 
Yeah. Should we wait for this to the play? I think we can uh, share with you. Sure. Yeah, 
And this is effective 1 December 2019. So we have a amended motion by Mr. Gregory. Do we have a second? Yes, sir. And we have a motion, not an amended motion. He just, he just made the motion, and I believe Ms. Wenger seconded it. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And that includes the amendment. Yes, sir. You hear Okay. Uh, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Council. I think we need to go back to item 12 for the amendment of the effective date. I believe we do. Mr. Shaw, do we have to have a council member request to go back? Yes, you need to. Someone needs to formally ask that, that item 12 be reopened, have that seconded, have the council vote on it. If the council decides it wants to reopen item 12, then you can go back and reopen item 12. And yes, we have a majority of the order. Um, we're not really trying to change anything. Okay. Um, I'll go back to that. number 12. If that is what I asked of the council for approval to go back and reopen 12, yes, for sure. That would be appropriate. I, I request that the council would go back to item number 12 for the sole purpose of one amendment. We have a motion by Mr. Gregory. We have a second. Second by Mr. May. All in favor? All in favor. Okay, yes. My amendment is to add in the end that the effective date of 1 December 2019. I need a second for my proposal. All in A second by Mr. Sanderson. All in favor? Unanimous. Do we need to go back to the original motion, Mr. Small? Um. I think it would be appropriate to now basically vote again on the original motion as amended to include the new effective date. Yes, sir. I move it again. I'll second. <laughs> okay, now we have a first one, Mr. Gregory, second one, Mr. Sanderson. All in favor? All vote? Abstaining? Okay, so that's uh, 4 0 1. One abstention, Ms. Winger. Uh, motion passes. I would uh, move to uh, pull item number 19 because it's a duplicate of what 16 is. I don't see any difference. Uh, you'd like to pull item number 19, is that correct? That's correct. We have a motion to pull by Mr. Sanderson. Do we have a second? Since it said that my item can is similar to item 16, is that a second? I'll second. Okay, well, it's a first of Mr. Sanderson, a second of Mr. Gregory. All in favor? That okay. We have pulled item number 19. Okay, we're going to go back to item number 16. Consider, consider an act of the appointment of a council member to serve as mayor pro tem for a period of one year. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. I propose that we appoint for the council a mayor pro tem. You know, I have a couple of Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I propose that we uh, appoint as mayor pro tem Joe Gisbrain. Okay. Okay, we have a first and a second. Any discussion? I think one, one year is the incorrect language. It, it's not a period of one year, it should be through May of 2020. Okay, is because that, Mr. Esbrand may not be on the council. Yes. Understood. Is that an amendment? Is that an amendment or a I'm going to the We did the language oh, for the period of out. We might hear again for a moment. So I think it's good to work. We want to do a break, but we don't have to do anymore. Uh, Mr. Snow. Yeah, Mr. Snow, can I get an opinion on that? Yeah. Interesting yeah. enough, the local government code says that. Um, at each new governing body's first meeting or soon as practical, the governing body shall elect one alderman to serve as president pro tempore for a term of one year. So the wording term of one year is consistent with um, section 22.037 of, of the local government code. Um, I agree with the comment that was made that if the person um, who um, was appointed as mayor pro tem is no longer on the council, 
the council will replace that person. Um, and I also think that the, the term will end by operational law um, uh, at the governing body's first meeting or as soon as practical after the next uh, election in May. Um, uh, so uh, either way, you're doing something that's consistent with the statute, but as a practical matter, the term might not be a year. Perfect. Thank you. In that case, uh, in order to minimize some additional work, all in favor of the point of the first time I'm assuming you're saying this. Okay. Motion passed unanimously. Mr. Chairman, it's never done. Come on. Uh, <laughs> item number 17. Consider an act of appointments to the Architectural Review Committee.